Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank each of the panelists for participating uh, in this. And due to the large number of uh, participants in this panel, our first round of questions uh, will be uh, an amount of 10 minutes uh, to each uh, of the members of the, the subcommittee. Um, I, I want to thank our, our chairman, uh, Chairman Chase, for his efforts in putting this together. Uh, obviously, taken into context with previous hearings uh, that our chairman has had on the issue of the vulnerability of our, our nuclear facilities, the information that we have today is, is certainly very helpful in determining whether or not the threat assessment is actually being translated into action by the appropriate parties. And um, Mr. Slobodin, my first question is, is to you. In looking at, at your testimony and the written portion, uh, you say a most significant point is that an accident at Indian Point plants involving the release of large amounts of radioactive radioactivity is extremely unlikely even in the event of a terrorist attack of the types we've seen on civilian and military targets worldwide. You then go on to, to talk about the reactor core itself and its, its protection. Uh, I know you're well aware that the testimony that this committee has received previously and even the statements of our chairman today have indicated that some of the areas of vulnerability that have been identified for your plant are not necessarily related to the core, and yet you continue to dismiss in your statement any vulnerability uh, or any likelihood of vulnerability um, of the facility. That, that raises a concern on, on my part, obviously, because when we look at the NRC or yourselves as, as operators, we would want a heightened level of concern and activity, not a dismissive level of, of interest. Could you please describe why you've come to the conclusion that, that it's unlikely and that it's unlikely to have the impact that obviously others that have come before this committee describe as significant and real? I, I think that latter point is indeed the most important, important point. And what I'm saying here is that the nature of the radioactivity that is at a nuclear power plant, Indian Point and all other nuclear power plants, is well understood. It's finite. You can't add more to it than what is already there. An event that has a severe impact is one which releases substantial quantities of that radioactivity. In, from the nuclear core, we talk about an accident that melts the core. From a fuel pool, we talk about an accident that involves a fuel, fuel, fuel pool fire. The nature of those accidents is not different whether they are initiated by a mechanical problem or a terrorist because the radioactivity, the issue at, con at concern, is the same. The response to those kind of events is a symptom-based response. That is, emergency planners measure the amount of radioactivity and they take action accordingly to decide protective actions. So when I say that events are not differentiated based on the initiating event, that's what I mean. 